Allie Borealis. Welcome in. So today I'm going to be doing an unboxing from a viewer. It's the same viewer that sent me the, the big box of Patricia's with all the estate jewelry. I ended up doing three videos on it. I'll link all the videos below if you want to watch them. Now we did sell everything in those three videos. And that's kind of what I wanted to tell you about was what we ended up donating. But if you want to watch the videos, there's so much information and I learned so much just going through the boxes about different jewelry pieces and vintage pieces and what a kite mark is. I had no idea what that was. So if you just want to watch the videos for information, they're there for you. I did want to give you the total of what we ended up donating to the Last Chance Horse and Pony Rescue in Ontario, Canada in Pat's name. She was the one who passed away and her neighbor Sue inherited her jewelry. The total that we donated to this animal charity was $931.53 USD, which converts to $1,286.07 Canadian. So Sue and I are just really pleased that we were able to make such a big donation to this animal charity in the name of Pat. So Sue also sent me some of her things and that's what we're gonna be looking at today. We're gonna first start off with three amazing Sherman pieces. Sherman is a Canadian company started by Gustav Sherman. He prided himself on high quality pieces and used Swarovski crystals as his stones. I really love this Sherman crown brooch and I searched for other Sherman crown brooches and I couldn't find any. So I think this might actually be a pretty rare piece. And there's our unmistakable Sherman Maker's Mark on the back. I am putting this one in an online auction and I'll put the link below if anyone wants to bid on it. Because of the consistent quality of Sherman's pieces, he only had one price range for his jewelry. Expensive. These are lovely flower clip back earrings. The link to bid on these is posted below. This lovely Sherman brooch is multi-layered. You can see the two top layers or tiers are in leaf design and the bottom layer is in a double wreath design. It is definitely a wow piece. And I haven't seen a whole lot of Sherman pieces that are layered quite like this one is. And here's the back construction with the Sherman uh, signature at the bottom. And I'll post the link on this one if anyone wants to bid on it. Okay, let's get to the rest of the box. So these are Sue's personal items that are different from Patricia's items. So let's see what she has sent us. She said this lot, I got it in an auction for $3. Let's see what this $3 lot has in store. Oh, she has some Disney stuff. Just a little something for you. Why? Because I like you. Oh, it's a Hallmark. It was sold by Hallmark. Sometimes these have the year on them, but you know what? That little Mickey and Company emblem, I remember was popular in the 90s. I think even late 80, late 80s, maybe early 90s. I don't see a year on it. Oh, look, it's got French too, because they're in Canada. And I think these are, let's see, are these earrings? Oh no, these are pins. These are two pins. Oh, that's so neat. They've got the shadows cast. Very cute. These are very cute pins. They're like little sweetheart pins. One just sold on eBay for $9.99, so I'm gonna do $9 on ours. Nacon, hmm, I haven't heard of that before. Oh, this is a, a purse, a purse hook for the table. You ladies know what these are. You put them on the table and then you can hook your purse on it when you're out at a restaurant or something. Oh, this is like an enamel. It has an enamel top. 
pretty flower. I don't think this has really ever been used. And yeah, there's the name of the company, Na Nacon. In original box, even that says Nacon. Ooh, this is a pretty butterfly pendant with rhinestones. That's what the back looks like. Let me see if there's any markings on it. I'm gonna say no. There's a lot of little like marks and things, but I just think that's the natural part of what happened when they made it. I don't really see a maker's mark. This almost feels like pewter. It's very beautiful though. Very ornate. You have your rhinestones and enamel as well. I can tell it's a well-made piece, not only from the size of the bale compared to ones I'm seeing online, but also they took the time to design a really intricate back. And I'm gonna do $18 on this one. Please email me if you wanna purchase. This is a pendant. I wonder if it's kind of a hobbyist piece. It's interesting though, it's interesting and unique. I wanna check it to see if it's magnetic. Hmm, I don't think so. I wanna just test it for silver. I don't think it's silver, but I'm gonna test that. Oh, here's a little ring someone made, a bead ring. Cute, cute, pretty colors. Ah, so I've learned that these are usually origami owl, that they made these little ones and then you could stuff it with different little um, charms and trinkets and things. So this looks Canadian inspired. Oh my, look at that brooch. I think this one's signed. There's a lot of little things happening in that one. Let's see what this mark says. Oh, it says Bijou Belts. I have never heard of this. Definitely a brooch. That almost seems like it's natural stone. I'm gonna check it real quick and see if that registers as natural stone. Oh, it totally does. I went back and tested again and there are actually three pieces of natural stone on this brooch. And because of that, I'm gonna do $20 on this brooch. This is fortune cookie locket. Write your own fortune and pass the luck onto someone special. Wow. Oh, it's sold by Urban Outfitters, $20. It doesn't look like it's ever been open. Yeah, peel here. I don't think it has been opened, so I'm not gonna open it. So the top lid does flip open to reveal this rose gold colored fortune cookie. And if you read the back of it, it says, includes suede carrying bag and five blank papers for fortunes. But originally $20 unopened from Urban Outfitters. And then we have this. This was one of those kind of snake style uh, necklaces. Let's see if this is magnetic. Oh, it's definitely magnetic. Sometimes I think these are sterling, but this one's not. It's pretty long. This says, from my stash, various pieces, some sterling. Oh yeah, I do see what looks like it's, it's sterling coming out of this bag. I wonder if that's a, like a Sarah Coventry. Let's see if there's a mark on that one. Yeah, it's stamped like S-M-I-B-O-S-T-E-R here at the bottom. So it it's supposed to be sterling. Let's just see. It is non-magnetic, so this is sterling. That's terrific. It still has the safety chain intact, which is always nice. That's a beautiful vintage bracelet. So many of this style bracelets are um, just costume. You know, you remember the ones 
that we got from Patricia's estate, all of these that were, I think, Sarah Coventry, um, you know, all of these are costume. So this is the same style, but it's sterling. That's a real bonus. And for me, you know, it's a lesson to not assume just because I've only seen bracelets like this designed in um, costume design, just because I've only seen bracelets like this that are costume, it has, it, it's a good reminder for me of like, oh no, just, I really need to check everything. Even though I think, oh, that's costume. I've seen that one a million times. It's costume. Maybe it's not. So these letters stand for Smith and Bond, and they were a jewelry company out of Toronto who made jewelry from 1938 to 1983, and they specialized in gold and sterling jewelry. This sterling bracelet has a beautiful floral etching, and this style was popular from the late 40s into the 50s. And I'm going to do $68 for this bracelet. This looks sterling with a natural gemstone natural stone. Let's see if there's a mark on that. Yes, there is a mark on the bale right here. And this is um, natural stone. So that's sterling. Here's this ring. Hmm, that's non-magnetic. Get some more information and see. This one does have um, an opening in the back you can see the stone right there. I'm curious if the stone is a gemstone and then it has these little bitty ones on the side. Let's see what we're doing. Oh yeah, wait, let's see. I touched the metal. <laughs> no, that appears to be glass and these are probably glass as well. Okay. I looked at this ring a little closer. It is stamp 925. Those are marcasites on the side of it. And you can see there's a couple of them missing and the glass stone in the middle has some chips and scratches. This is definitely costume. I don't see any marks on that. It looks copper, but I don't even think that's copper. Oh, this is a pretty little ring. Look at the detail on that one. This looks like it could be sterling. I wonder if these are gold. Let me see if it has any marks on it. It's real lightweight. It does say 925 and GLP. Now we're going to go on a deep dive here. There are several listed on eBay. Here's a couple and they attribute them to George L. Payne. When I researched George L. Payne, he was only in business from 1909 to 1922 and mostly made solid gold. And we know the 925 mark was not used at the turn of the century. So those eBay listings and the GLP mark with the 925 cannot possibly be George L. Payne. I have to say this sterling ring is a real modernist stunner, whoever made it. And I'm going to do $40 for this ring, which is a steal of a deal. This doesn't look sterling. It looks like it's costume. But it has an interesting little mark right there, which I don't know what that is even. I'm gonna just test that one. Do any of you know what these marks are? I'm not even sure which way they go. I'm assuming the stamp is Egyptian and it does test sterling. We have this ring. Look how pretty that is. This one does have a 925 stamp in it and it's, it's also stamped eight. So I'm assuming this is a size eight. There's also another mark on this ring. This is not from my ring, but this is what the mark looks like. And it is Chateau d'Argent of Canada. I hope I said that right. Now there's also a Chateau d'Argent in the United States, and I'll show you what the marks look like to differentiate them. And as far as I can tell, these are two completely different companies with the same name. The Canadian company has been around longer. Let me test the stone. Yeah, that's glass. Let me get you a size on this one. Oh yeah, that's about an eight right there. It's a lovely uh, rectangle shaped stone. 
Here's uh, another sterling. Well, I don't know, it feels a little rough. Let me see. Oh, definitely not sterling. Look at that. Look at the wear on that. Yeah, that's not even marked. I wish that was sterling. It's so decorative. Let me just see a size on it, if anyone's interested in that one. That's a seven and a half. We have a pretty little locket with some marks on the back. Oh, there it goes. Oh yeah, empty locket. Let's see what the marks say back here. Nice little engraving magnetic oh yeah it's stamp sterling you know the 925 mark really came about in 1973 so a lot of the times if the pieces are marked sterling you know it's at least vintage this is just a little costume ring I don't think it's non magnetic but I don't think it's gold or sterling no marks on it, but I'll give you a size on it. It's a size nine. I wonder how that is to wear with all those little spikes on it. I guess you get used to it. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> oh, here's another one. This also has some wear. I wonder, no, those seems, no, those don't go together. No marks on that. I'm gonna see if I can test those though. Let's see. Mm, yeah, I can't imagine if this is real costume like that. I can't imagine those stones or anything. No, that's just glass. And that's a size five and a half. And then we have this one. Tiffany. I wonder if this is a fake Tiffany. I don't know. That, it doesn't seem right if it's a Tiffany. Let me check for other marks. I'll need to research this one a little bit more. This is stamped sterling and the whole thing is non-magnetic. I just don't know if I'm liking how these are printed. You can see these are really sloppily printed. Tiffany would never sell something this sloppy given that they are a very high-end boutique. Also, Tiffany's links are continuous and seamless and you can see the links on this bracelet all have seams. I did test this bracelet and it does test as sterling, but in the United States, we can't sell, legally sell, fake brands so unfortunately i can't sell this bracelet i wish it was a real tiffany so i sat with this for a little bit and what i decided to do was to to remove the two tiffany charms because the bracelet itself isn't marked tiffany it just has the 925 stamp on it so i'm just gonna sell the bracelet that that has no tiffany marks on it it doesn't claim to be tiffany and it's a beautiful double strand sterling uh kind of like charm bracelet and i'm just gonna sell the bracelet by itself and i'm offering it to you guys for 45 dollars okay Brooches, recent auction. Ooh, look at that one. I think this one is more modern. It has really pretty stones though in it but I do feel like it's a more modern brooch that's possibly made in China. It's beautiful though. It especially, it reminds me a lot of um, Christmas. If you want like a Christmassy brooch, it has kind of the, some of the leaves and just a real festive feel to it. Festive holiday feel. Oh, this is a shoe uh, or scarf clip. I don't think it has any writing on it. These are usually a little bit older. Oh, look at that one. No markings on this one. Has a lot of enamel work on it. 
and it has a little dome to it. And, he, and then here's a heart pin. No marks on that one. I don't think that's sterling. It's like a, a pin or a tie tack. Non-magnetic, but I don't really think that's sterling. Okay, this is from an auction. This is a bolo. Is that like maybe Masonic? Let's see if there's anything on the back here. I think it's just the back of what we're seeing on the front. Sometimes these tips are sterling, but these feel like a tougher metal than sterling. They're slightly magnetic. This one says from a Max Sold Auction recent. I wonder if that's supposed to be kind of bent. Oh, there we go. This would make uh, for great a great 4th of July pin. It's very large and it has some weight to it and it looks like all the rhinestones are here. It's, it's very sweet to have a Canadian send me an American flag. <laughs> I love the um, the Canadian American partnership here. From an auction paid a dollar recently. This looks like it might be set in sterling. I want to test these stones. It's very pretty for only a dollar. It is stamped 925. Let me just give these a little test. That's glass. My presidium's on, yes. Okay. That's glass. That's glass. That's glass. For this colorful sterling CZ cross pendant, I'm going to do $16. Okay. We have two bags left. This one is a retirement clear out, and then this one is from my retirement clear out. We're going to start with this one. I'll save the more interesting one for last. Oh, these are all owls. How sweet. Look at that little owl pen. Oh, gosh, that's adorable. That's very fall. Oh, here's another. This is an owl brooch. It's also very fall with the oranges and the kind of burgundy colors. I don't think this is signed but these are really sweet. We have a green and blue enamel owl with a long chain. Oh, look at that with all of the stones. And it has an open back. I don't think that's sterling, but I'm always questioning like if it has an, an open back for the stones to catch more of the light. You know, it takes more work to put in an open back on, on rhinestones. So it, sometimes it has me wonder if it's actually a gemstone, but I am doubting it is. Yeah, no, those are just rhinestones. We have this pretty old owl with blue, little blue kind of turquoise colored stones. We have this one that looks like it's a clay that's been glazed, like an art project. We have this little wood carved, I think it's wood, yeah, little wood carved owl. Look how cute he is. Somebody hand carved him. We have this little owl with some dyed howlite. Here's what the back looks like. He has some rhinestone eyes. I'm selling this sweet little owl pendant by itself because I discovered that the chain is sterling. I believe this style is called a diamond cut or a popcorn necklace. It's really unique. And the clasp is stamped. One side is stamped Italy and the other side is stamped 925 on the clasp. And it measures 23 and a half inches. And I'm going to do $18 on this uh, beautiful sterling popcorn diamond cut necklace. 
We have this fancy rhinestone. Look at all those colors on him. That's what the back looks like. Oh, unbranded. And then last, we have this looks like another um, art piece. Clay that they carved into and then glazed. So that's the owl collection. And we are down to the last bag of the 10 pounds. Ooh, look at that cameo. All right. So I'm gonna flip it over and I would say this is probably some kind of a precious metal. We're gonna figure that out. It's definitely carved. So this is more of like a real style cameo. These are made from shell, so they're carving into shell. And the cameo is translucent when you hold it to the light. Um, I'm gonna see if this is magnetic. No, I didn't think it was. So what you don't wanna do when you handle cameos, because your hands have so many oils that you know we might not even be present to, and is you don't wanna keep touching the face of the cameo because you, those oils on your hands are gonna end up on the face of the cameo. So you really wanna just kinda of hold it by the edges, try to avoid touching, um, especially the white part. Now let's take a peek here and see if there's any actual marks on it. There is a mark down here that says 800. So this is 800 silver, which is 80% silver. The threshold for sterling is 92.5%, which is why sterling pieces have the 925 mark. This is hand carved. Look at all the little details in there. She even has some flowers with her and she can be worn as a brooch or a pendant. So I'm gonna do $32 on this cameo. Ooh, how pretty. Look how fancy that is. It has both a really large stone and then these little tips have, hopefully that's a gemstone, but let's see. Oh, that's magnetic. It's very snaky, very snaky. That's magnetic. This is not magnetic. So I don't even know if this came with this particular necklace, but let's see if we can see any marks on it. It's such an interesting piece. I'm not seeing any marks. I want to see if, if this is an actual gemstone on here or just glass. I think it's just glass. This is a bracelet, like a watch style. And I think that might be dyed halite. Let's see, I have a feeling this is probably magnetic. Oh yeah, there it is. So it's a costume piece, but it has a really kind of Southwest feel to it. Here's a watch. Let's see what brand that is. Oh, I see. This is a watch and this is a bracelet and they're, they look identical. Like it's like they're from the same company. $29.99. It's a pretty watch, especially if you like all those gemstones. And it has uh, kind of your, just your matching bracelet. Let me see what that says. That says China. Let me um, see if these are registering as gemstones. Hmm. These are glass, but they're kind of a matched set. Like you could wear them together, the watch and the bracelet together. Hmm. I don't see any marks on this one. I don't think these are gemstones. I think it's a costume piece and it's magnetic as well. Real earthy tones on this one. 
Okay. Here's a heavy um, gold tone chain, unmarked, but look how pretty it is. It's a real statement kind of a chain. And it's a very long 30 inch chain. And then we have this necklace. Really pretty kind of, um, I think these are glass. Art glass. I don't think it has any marks on it. Here's an unmarked necklace. It's like a V-shaped. Let me see if it's magnetic. Oh, it is magnetic. I do remember when these were in style, the little V shape on this. With the rhinestone. We have this interesting, uh, looks like a necklace and a bracelet. It, it almost reminds me of cows. I mean, these are dyed howlite, and I'm not even clear what these are or how they were made. They're definitely man-made beads, but it's so interesting. It, it's very kind of Southwest. When I Google image this, it comes up as African batik bone, which is made from natural bone, 100% bone. These aren't natural bone. These uh, seem almost like they're wood. And then the batik is a wax relief that creates uh, the imagery on it. And then we have this, uh, looks like a tile, pretty tile. No markings, no artist marking on the back, but it's it seems like it's a handmade tile on a rope style uh, necklace. And then we have this large, it seems like it's a locket. Sometimes these aren't lockets, sometimes they're just hollow. Maybe it's just hollow. Oh, but that looks like a hinge. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a music box. I don't know who these people are. If this is the generic photo that was in here or if this is someone that Sue knows. And then we have this really large piece of glass, this glass pendant. No marks on that, and I don't see um, any marks on this either. It's a very large piece of glass. Let's just test it here. Yep, it's glass. Looks like it's in clean shape, though. And then we have this one. This is Lucite. I wish it was glass, but I can tell it's more of a plastic. I don't think it has any brand or marks on it. And then it has this interesting kind of snake style chain, but I don't see any brand or anything on it. Very, very pretty. If you see anything you like, please email me. I so appreciate every single one of you who watch my channel.